Her name was Vipsania Julia Agrippina, but she was known simply as Julilla, or Little Julia. Born in 19 BC, she was the second child of Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, the man forever beloved by Rome's legions, and Julia Augusti Filia, the controversial daughter of Caesar Augustus. She was the second grandchild of Augustus, born between her older brother, Gaius Vipsanius, and her younger brother, Lucius Vipsanius. Then her parents gave her a sister, also named Vipsania Julia, to add to the four older half-sisters from her father's previous marriages. And finally, little Julia had yet another brother, Marcus Vipsanius, named for her famous father, but called Posthumus. Because he was born after their father, Marcus Agrippa's death. At the tender age of approximately 13, she had been given away in marriage to her first cousin on her mother Julia's side, Lucius Aemilius Paulus. Both she and her bridegroom were the grandchildren of Scribonia Libo, who had been married to her grandfather, Caesar Augustus. Their marriage was meant to bear political fruit. In that same year, when Julilla had been wedded to the son of her mother's sister, Cornelia Scipio, her 14-year-old brother, Gaius, had been unanimously elected to the consulship by the people of Rome. Her brother was now called Gaius Caesar. Her new Claudian stepfather, Tiberius, was a threat to her grandfather's succession plans, but Julilla's mother, Julia, and grandmother, Scribonia, had hoped to stop him by discreetly managing her brother's election. Other families who were supporters of her mother and grandmother, like the Sempronii and the Emilii, the family her husband came from, had agreed to support her older brother. But then, Julilla's grandfather, Caesar Augustus, had put his foot down. He didn't take back her brother's accomplishment, but he had said her brother couldn't be consul before he reached the age of 20. No matter. Her mother was very happy that the whole incident had caused her stepfather, Tiberius, to leave Rome altogether. This demanded that her grandfather advance her brothers, a state of affairs sure to suit her mother. But things did not work out as planned. By 4 AD, both her brothers were dead. Her mother and grandmother were being punished on an island, while her stepfather had been brought back to Rome. Her poor grandfather was now completely surrounded by Claudians, who supported her stepfather, Tiberius. The people of Rome had noticed, and they didn't like it. The plebs had protested the harsh punishments given to Julilla's mother and grandmother. For several years they had marched in the streets shouting at her grandfather to release the merry widow. But when her stepfather, Tiberius, had been formally adopted into the Julian family, following the mysterious deaths of her brothers, Gaius and Lucius Caesar, the plebs had begun to ask questions. Pointing their fingers at the Claudians, the Roman people became even more angry, and they wanted answers. Julilla's grandfather sought to appease the public by moving Scribonia and Julia from the isolated island of Pandateria to the town of Regium, back on the mainland. He purchased a domus in which they could live and extended to them a generous monthly allowance. Though Julilla's mother and grandmother were now permitted to move about the town, they were forbidden to return to Rome, nor were they allowed to shed the watchful eye of their guards. Caesar Augustus further attempted to subdue the anger of the people by finally adopting Julilla's last brother, Posthumus Agrippa. But the people's outrage was anything but subdued. Gaius and Lucius's adoption had come with promises of career advancement. They had been given offices, priesthoods and titles, all in advance of the legal age requirements. But for Posthumus Agrippa, nothing. No preferential treatment was offered. And so, the plebs intensified their efforts. In 6 AD, the demonstrations on behalf of Julilla's family took on a more sophisticated tone. At night, as the citizens of Rome slept, 
bulletins and pamphlets began to appear on buildings around the Forum Romanum. These pamphlets, attributed to a Publius Rufus, generated much sympathy for the fallen scions of Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, alleging blood on the hands of the Claudians. The groundswell also criticized the methods of Caesar Augustus in adopting Posthumus, legally changing his name from Vipsanius Agrippa to Marcus Julius Caesar, all but guaranteeing that her father, Marcus Agrippa's name, would soon vanish from Rome's memory. Also within the handbills were demands that Caesar Augustus release the large inheritance bequeathed to Posthumus by their late father, Marcus Agrippa, over which Augustus had assumed control. The pamphlets accused Julilla's grandfather of theft by adoption, as a means of depriving Julilla's brother of his rightful inheritance. Julilla's outraged grandfather, Caesar Augustus, launched an investigation. A man by the name of Publius Plautius Rufus was apprehended and charged with authorship of the pamphleting campaign of 6 AD. Upon standing trial before Rome's Senate, however, it was proven that his name had been used seditiously and without his knowledge or consent. Publius Plautius Rufus was found not guilty of the crime, leaving the identity of the true Publius Rufus an ongoing mystery. And still, Pamphlets continued to multiply in the Forum Romanum. Then, in 7 AD, as these political tracts continued to strengthen public support for the descendants of Marcus Agrippa, Julilla's brother, Posthumus, legally emancipated himself from the manus, or ownership of his grandfather, Caesar Augustus. But Julilla's brother paid a heavy price for such a bold move. The abdication of Posthumus Agrippa culminated in Caesar Augustus removing his unruly grandson from Rome, banishing him to the Greek colony of Sorrentum, and placing him under guard, in the early months of 8 AD. But Sorrentum, which was located on the Bay of Naples in Campania, stood in close proximity to the Portus Julius, the Mycenaean naval harbour which had been secretly constructed by their father, Marcus Agrippa during the civil wars. As the centre of Rome's naval fleet, the Portus Julius, just a few miles across the Bay of Naples from Sorrentum, was filled with military men who honoured the name of Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa. And on multiple occasions, Julilla's exiled brother was permitted by his guards to take a rowboat out into the bay, to go fishing. Before long, News of a plot reached the ears of Julilla's grandfather. Two men, Lucius Audacius and Asinius Sepicadus, were said to be spearheading a full-scale plan to rescue Julilla's fallen family. One of the men, Asinius Sepicadus, owed his freedman status to Gaius Asinius Gallus, the husband of Vipsania, who was hers and her brother's half-sister. Julilla's mother and grandmother were to be rescued from Regium, and Posthumus was to be snatched from the town of Sorrentum. Once reunited, Scribonia, Julia, and Posthumus were then to be rushed to the safety of the legions, likely at the Portus Julius. Although he had excused himself from attendance in the law courts, citing ill health and weakness as his reasons, Julilla's grandfather, Caesar Augustus, had somehow managed a rigorous journey north. His new heir, Tiberius Julius Caesar had been given command over the ongoing conquest of Germania. However, as Julilla's stepfather had marched his forces into Gaul, rebellion had broken out in Pannonia. After marching for only a few days, Tiberius had been forced to turn his men around and address the Pannonian revolt. Under the guise of advising Tiberius on the Pannonian campaign, Caesar Augustus met with his newly adopted son and heir in Tiberius's command tent. There, Augustus consulted with Tiberius, now the second man in Rome, regarding the plot to rescue Julia, Scribonia, and Posthumus Agrippa from exile. By the time Julilla's grandfather departed from Pannonia, the matter was settled, but not to the benefit of Julilla's fallen family. Upon returning to Rome, Caesar Augustus took action. 
the exile destination of posthumous Agrippa, like that of Julilla's mother and grandmother, was reassigned. Guards escorted Julilla's brother from the town of Sorrentum, removing him from the grasp of the populists, and transported Posthumus to Planasia, a small island north of Rome, situated between Corsica and the Italian mainland. The inheritance Caesar Augustus had withheld from his grandson, he donated to the legion stationed at the Portus Julius. Now, with his movements severely restricted, and even more guards to keep him company, there would be no more fishing trips for Julilla's little brother. But the battle for the survival of Marcus Agrippa's descendants must go on. It was fated to end forever in the hands of the Claudians. But Julilla and her husband, Aemilius Paulus, would now become the secret figureheads of the populist attempt to overthrow the Claudian power, a power which besieged Julilla's aging grandfather. While doing everything possible to shield her identity, Julilla chose to pick up and continue to carry the political mantle she had inherited from her mother and grandmother. One way or another, Julilla would free her family. Then, the remaining descendants of Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa could exact their vengeance for the deaths of her brothers, Gaius and Lucius Caesar. Deaths that could only have been wrought by the Claudian usurpers, 